Good morning, everybody in Jambo. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just before we start the service, on Wednesday when we were at FFF, our friends from uh, St. Cuthbert's Parish were there and they brought us a present, a gift. So Dave's assembled it and we brought it in this morning so that everybody can have a look at it and what they've given us. The money is going towards uh, people in the poor countries and also in England as well. So it's been divided, it's there in their Lent project. And the card says, A prayer for you at Easter, to wish you peace and happiness at Easter from the RC Parish of St. Cuthbert's. And you can either use it as a bird box or a bat box. We've done a bo we've done a bird box, so I don't know where the property committee are going to put it, but it's up to them now, and this is it. So I will send a letter of thank you. Uh, but it was very kind of them to remember us, and they, they are being distributed throughout the neighbourhood. Okay. Okay. And now I'd like to welcome. Our minister, who we know very well. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And a happy Easter to you all. Happy Easter to you. Let's just have a few moments of quiet before we have the Easter liturgy at the beginning of our service. Let's just be quiet and recognise the importance and the significance of this day. And now the Easter liturgy. Can I ask the people who are assisting us with tripping the cross to line up as instructed, please? Thank you. Easter is coming. Easter is here. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Darkness cannot overcome the light of God. Death cannot defeat the light of God. We take away the symbols of betrayal, suffering and death. We remove the cup, the symbol of suffering love. We remove the money bag and 30 pieces of silver, the symbols of betrayal. We remove the whip the reminder of the cruelty inflicted upon our innocent Lord. We remove the palms, symbol of prayers that so quickly turn to division and to cries of the crucified. We remove the bowl and towel and the bread and wine, symbols of the sacrificial love of Jesus. We remove the nails that held our Saviour to the cross.
We remove the crown of thorns and purple robe, the reminders of the mockery Jesus endured. May we be placed the crown of thorns with the crown of flowers, for Jesus is risen. <coughs> God has put an end to death and darkness in the risen life of Jesus Christ. Christ is, is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The cross stands empty now. During the singing of the hymn, the first hymn, our church shows will dress the cross with the flowers that you have brought. <coughs>
yet believe. The disciples were assembled behind closed doors when suddenly you entered. You stood in their midst and gave them your peace. You breathed the Holy Spirit upon them. You commanded them to wait in Jerusalem until they would be clothed with power from on high. Give us your understanding so we may cry to you, Glory to you, my God and Lord. We come in your love to worship with each other. We come to you knowing that we have done wrong. Somehow, somewhere, we didn't do what was what is right. We let you down and ourselves down. Through your death, our sin is forgiven. We are so thankful to you for our lives, for our friends and our church family. We have so much to be thankful for, we cannot find the words. We confirm our love for you every day as we say the prayer you taught us, the Lord's Prayer. We say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. some young people if they wish to come and join me to find out what I've got inside this bag. Don't all rush at once. <laughs> Sit down if you wish. You understand? That? Right, there are three articles in this bag which have taken me absolutely ages to put together. <laughs> Who would like to take out article number one without opening it just yet? <laughs> <laughs> Can we get the That's you who gets the biggest one. Now you trust you to get the biggest one. Don't turn, open it yet. <coughs> And the final one. Are we, we going to have these? <laughs> Wait. Be patient. You will discover later on. Yes. Better pull, better pull it up a bit so you can get down to the bottom. Okay. okay. Come to forward more than three articles. Oh. Now, um, Apart from the people who've got these three articles, everybody else can sit down. <coughs> now then, you can now, at the same time, each of you open the article, open the packets that you've got. Just open those packets that you've picked out. Don't get too excited about it. That's okay. And you've got another one, another envelope. So look, look inside that envelope. Look at that, see what's inside. There we are. Yes, indeed. So you take, open the envelope. You open the envelope. And take out what's inside. Right? No. We have three articles. I'm going to ask you some questions, by the way, in a moment. Anybody is allowed to answer the questions? First of all, what is this? 
Yes? An Easter egg. Got some smarters in as well, so it's a bit an expensive Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> take, her, take her back there. What is this? Palms. Yes? A cross. A palm cross. Yes. And what is this? Yes? A Didn't hear that. I didn't, didn't, didn't catch that. What's, what's this? Oh, okay. A hot cross bun. Right. Very good. Now then, here's a very hard thing for you to do. The three people who are holding the things in your hand, I want you to stand in the order in which those events took place. If you could, wait, right, just wait a moment. <laughs> so, we've got a palm cross, a hot cross bun, and an Easter egg. Right. Who is going to be the first one, starting over here, who is going to stand first? We're keeping it in order in which they happen. Yes. Palm Cross for Palm Sunday, yes. which was last week. So you're the first in line. Just hold it up. That's right. Who is going to be the second in line? Yes, because that's a hot cross bun that reminds us of Good Friday, does it not? So that's Face the face, everyone, that's right. And the third is an Easter egg, which of course is eaten, <laughs> is what we receive today if we are a good person and we don't interrupt every few seconds. <laughs> uh, I'm so tactful. <laughs> Basically, we are reminded, you don't have to hold it quite as high as that, you don't want to block, unless you want to block my face up. <laughs> this, of course, is the Palm Cross. It reminds us of Palm Sunday, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a what? What was he riding? A donkey. A donkey. Because he wasn't. Okay, and a donkey, and of course the cross reminds us that he was the beginning of the journey towards Good Friday. And Good Friday reminds us of this item here. Can I just throw out it for a moment? A hot cross bun with the cross on it, and of course the spices remind us of, well not very nice really, but when people died, and people died in those days, they used to put spices over the bodies so that they wouldn't uh, go too bad, too, rot. Okay, that's the hot cross bun for Good Friday. Mind you, these days, these days, they send, uh, they sell hot cross buns all year round. But when I was your age, a few years ago, it was only really just before Easter that you bought. And this is a what? An Easter egg. An Easter egg made of chocolate. Very nice. But you will know it, well, if you did open it, and if I did give you permission to open it, you would take off the wrappings and you would discover <coughs> that. It's like a tomb or where, some where dead bodies are put. Be so cheerful, aren't they? <laughs> but when Jesus was buried, of course, the tomb was closed. But on Easter morning, when the women went to the tomb, the tomb was open. Right? So that's what we're celebrating today because Jesus was on the way to the cross. 
He went to the cross where it was very painful and he died, but that was not the end of the story because he rose again from the dead and if we believe in him, we can live forevermore, starting now. Okay. Thank you very much for your help. And maybe at the end of the service we can perhaps do something with these, um, these articles and we'll decide what to do with them. But thank you very much. And um, we're now going to sing a song which I was told we had to sing today, so we better sing it now. Because we are reminded that Jesus died and he rose again, and if we believe in him, someday we are going to see Jesus again in heaven, and we can rejoice with that. And I'm suggesting that if we can dig some flags out of the corner, somebody, oops, we can wave the flags whilst we're singing this song. Okay? So we can like to get hold of, stand up, get hold of a flag, and wave it whilst we're singing this song soon and very soon. Okay, so uh, we'll sing it through once, um, and then if you can join it, because uh, although anybody who went to the Sons of Praise will know it, that wasn't the whole of the congregation here. So anybody who did go to the Sons of Praise, please join in and uh, help us the, the first time as well. So um, as I say, we'll sing it once through, and then if you can uh, all stand up and sing. Spiritually poor. 
A society which seems set on creating inequalities, which fuel jealousy and resentment, where people are encouraged to climb up the heap of emptiness over the heads of their fellow men. We know it's wrong, but the gnawing stone of envy is an old companion. It's hard to shake it off, even at this glorious Eastertide. Give us the grace, we pray, to rejoice in the genuine good fortune of others and be ever grateful for the life you have given us to joyfully serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, come in love. Amen. Sovereign Lord, we pray for the people of France, who last week witnessed the near destruction of their Cathedral of Notre Dame, a symbol of your greatness in a secularised society. May artists, designers and stonemasons use their God-given talents to transform the mute stones of indifference into works of beauty that shout out your praises. We pray for the firefighters and those in all emergency services throughout the world who risk their lives every day for the sake of others. Be with them and help them bear such weighty stones of responsibility. Let the cross of Jesus go on before them, shining through their darkest times. Lord, come in love. And the Lord Merciful God, we pray for people who have shut themselves away out of fear of the world. For people who have been imprisoned for their faith, or simply for being different. We pray for those for whom the debilitating stone of illness has constrained their enjoyment of life. And we pray especially for Susie Martin's nephew Thomas and all his family in this stressful time. We also offer prayers for Janet, who is known to some members of our congregation. Come to those who suffer loss in silence, shackled to the seemingly inescapable stone of grief. May they find in you a friend and discover a sense of peace through true Christian fellowship. In these few moments, we can help by naming and praying for those known to us. Lord, come in love. Loving God, we pray for the family and friends of Leah and McKee and for all the victims of sectarian violence which consumes everyone in its path its twisted features hidden behind a mask without pity. The stone of prejudice is a withering blight on the Isle of Erin. We pray that you move the hearts of people and bring lasting peace to this troubled land. And this morning, we pray for the victims of the murderous attacks on churches in Sri Lanka during their Easter services. Lord Jesus, as you rose victorious over death, so may hope, faith and love continue to triumph over everything that conspires against them. Lord, come in love. Lord of past, present and future, we pray for this earth, <coughs> held by us in trust, we hear voices of concern for the effects of man-made climate change, becoming ever more strident as our folly becomes obvious. Yet, in the corridors of power, the inexcusable old ways of exploitation and destruction are still held dear. The dull, dead stone of greed is slowly strangling life in your creation. May we all open our eyes and take action to steward this wonderful world faithfully. 
so that generations to come will see its grandeur and glimpse something of you, the sovereign hand behind it all. Lord, come in love. And always. Mighty God, bringer of joy and hope, make us witnesses to your resurrection as these stones are rolled away. This we ask in the name of your risen Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I now take up the offering for the work of God in this place and beyond. This is the reading from St. John's Gospel. You find it on chapter 20, and we are reading verses 1 to 18, the empty tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him, and he went straight into the tomb. And he saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed, but still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus who was standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked, he asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking it was the gardener, she said, Sir, uh, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to Mary, She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Thanks, Thanks be to God, God for his word. word. Amen. Amen. I'm going to sing uh, hymn number 295 in uh, hymns of uh, sons of faith. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah.
1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 5, A New Life, and I'm reading from the Message Bible. What a God we have, and how fortunate we are to have him, this Father of our Master Jesus. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, you've been given a brand new life, and have everything to live for, including your future in heaven. And that future starts now. God is keeping careful watch over us and the future. The day is coming when you have it all, life healed and whole. I know how great this makes you feel, even though you've been put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime. Pure gold that's put in the fire comes out of it, proved pure. Genuine faith that's put through this suffering comes out, proved genuine. When Jesus wraps this all up, it's your faith, not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. You never saw him, yet you love him. You still don't see him, yet you trust him with laughter and singing. Because you have kept on believing, you'll get what you're looking forward to, total salvation. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Thank you for that reading from the first letter of Peter, the first chapter. And in seven verses, it is ram, jam, crammed full of all kinds of joyful messages. And it starts off. with praise. Starts off, starts off with a benediction. Normally when we have a service we finish off with a benediction. But here is Peter starting his message after the introduction with praise. Praise God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice who this God is. He's the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you must forgive me this morning if I use one or two grammatical terms, but I explain them as I go along. But our is a possessive adjective. And that reminds us that Jesus Christ belongs to us. He's our Lord, and God is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this God, we're told, is a God of great mercy. Mercy. In reality, no one deserves to receive mercy. In fact, there is absolutely nothing that we can do that will score enough spiritual brownie points to earn mercy from God. Everything we receive from God is by His grace. And if I had a fiver, for the number of times that I mentioned the word grace and tried to explain it in the various sermons that I've done over the years, I would be a very, very, very rich man indeed. But it's true, we cannot earn God's favour, but God in his mercy loves us anyway, despite the fact that we so often make such a mess of our lives. And if I may refer briefly to my message on Good Friday, which some people may have heard, probably already forgotten, there was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. Jesus was the only one who was good enough to pay the price of sin, to ensure that all our wrongdoings could be washed away. 
The only one who could do that was Jesus. But now, today, today perhaps above all days, Easter Sunday, we are promised a new life as a gift. And you know something? Peter uses an interesting phrase. He talks about new birth. Or in other words, being born again. Shock, horror. Born again Christians. Surely those are, that you can only use that description of probably Americans. Way out Americans. Extreme Americans. Extreme Christians of any, uh, of any, of any nation. They're the extremists, aren't they? The born again. Christians, that's what we're led to believe by some people. But here in the Bible, we have Peter talking about a new birth. And then, hang on a minute, wasn't there John in John's Gospel? Didn't Jesus say to Nicodemus, you must be born again? Perfectly normal, natural Christian thing to say. So if you want to join the extremist club, or you not, then you can join me as an extremist. Born again is a perfectly normal description of those who believe in Jesus. And it's a gift of new life, new spiritual life if we trust in him. And then uh, Peter goes on to talk about a living hope. Now what kind of picture does that word hope bring to your mind? An expression that we often hear used and sometimes use, I, even I sometimes use it, we hope it's going to be a nice day tomorrow. Or we hope that so and so is going to get this job he's been for an interview for. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Wishful thinking. Actually, this hope that we're talking about here is a living hope. The hope that we can have through knowing Jesus. And it's a hope that in the end we shall see Jesus face to face. Why? Because of the event that we're celebrating today, the resurrection of Jesus. We've thought about the crucifixion, and now it's the resurrection. We've had Good Friday, and now it's Easter Day. Both of them are needed. When we come to worship on Good Friday, we look forward to the resurrection. But we can't have the resurrection without having the crucifixion. And then Peter goes on to talk about an inheritance. Well, I suppose if you've got some rich auntie somewhere, you might be hoping for an inheritance when she finally leaves this life. Perhaps. Or, if you ever watched an antique road show, you may have been strayed onto that programme from time to time. You will notice that some people bring an object which they think is 
very expensive, and they discover that it's not worth much at all, not much of an inheritance. But the inheritance that we receive through knowing Jesus will never lose its value. It will never perish, spoil, or fade, as Peter describes it. Why? Because of the resurrection of Jesus. If we, if we know anything about Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, the resurrection passage in, in chapter 15, where death is your victory, where death is your sting. We have an inheritance kept in heaven for you. It's safe in heaven until we get there. It's shielded, says Peter, through faith. Shielded? That sounds like some kind of battle that we're in. Well, actually, we are in a spiritual battle. If you read Ephesians chapter 6, we are commanded or advised to put on the whole armour of God, including the shield, the shield of faith. And all this is because of God's power. As I said on Friday, even though the death of Jesus appears to be the ultimate weakness, actually it's a demonstration of the power of God. His death and his resurrection brings us salvation is another word now and also in the years to come in our prayers this morning I didn't know these words were going to be used but he pinched my lines and my bounce he talked about the past the present and the future. A past event, historical event, the death and resurrection of Jesus, has its consequences in our lives today, now, but also gives us hope for the future. And Peter says we can greatly rejoice. I think we ought to do a bit more rejoicing instead of being such miserable Methodists as we so often are. Because we've got something to be joyful about. Oh yes, let's be honest. There are times when we're going to suffer some kind of grief and there are all kinds of trials in our lives. And just because we're Christians doesn't mean that we're exempt from the troubles of this world. In fact, it's because we're Christians that we feel the troubles of these, this world even more. But, Peter suggests that these are to test our faith and to prove that it's genuine. And it's a faith more precious than gold. Because even gold can perish when it's refined by fire. One day, when Christ is revealed again at his second coming, there will be praise, glory and honour something 
worth waiting for. In the meantime, let's get on with the job of witnessing to Christ, not only through our words, but through our deeds. And may I remind you of someone called Thomas, Doubting Thomas. Unless I see him, he said, I won't believe. And Jesus gave Thomas his wish. But he also said, Blessed are those who have not seen Jesus and yet still believe. And that is us today. Peter is running out of words, really, as he carries on through this passage. It's an inexpressible and glorious joy we can know through Jesus. You are receiving. Grammatical term number two. Present continuous tense. Something that keeps on going. You are receiving. Not you have received, well you have received, but there's still more to receive. You are receiving God's love. That's the goal of your faith, said Peter. And he wasn't talking about football, thank goodness. That's the aim, the end result of our faith as that we shall be ever with the Lord. That's the ultimate prize. What a blessed message. That's a message that we should take out from this church, this Easter time. Sometimes we may have to use words. Other times it's how we behave but make sure we're doing it in honour of our crucified, risen Saviour from now until the day we see, see him face to face. Amen. 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 Now this very morning, I happened to pick this poem up from the internet. Gee. <laughs> Keith, what are you doing? <laughs> and I think it actually sums up much of what I've been trying to say this morning. It's called Stronger. We are all searching for something true, surrounded by fake news, extreme views, everyone's confused. But I've seen that love is stronger than fear. Haven't you? Sometimes it feels there's nothing we can do. We don't know who to trust. Systems are being abused. It can be lonely when you're searching for something true. We long for hope. We long for something new. We long for that bitter mountain to be moved. Yet I've seen that love is stronger than despair. Haven't you? Society seems to be in crisis, and perhaps our hearts are too. But there's a diff different perspective you can choose when you're searching for something true. If you peer behind a veil that's been torn in two, you'll see the promise of a world renewed. I've seen that love is stronger than hate. Haven't you? Maybe that's not enough. Maybe we need another clue. Maybe there are some things that will never be proved. Yet we're all searching for something true. And I've seen that love is stronger than death. Haven't you?
with honesty our next hymn, number 303, I know that my Redeemer chapter which tells us how we ought to approach the Lord's table by first of all confessing our sinfulness. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from all sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I deliberately emphasize the word all. Let's just spend a few moments in silence as we bring our own lives to God and ask for forgiveness for those times that we know we've strayed from his path. Let's be quiet for a short time. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you that because of the Lord Jesus' death on the cross, we can know your forgiveness. Not because we deserve it, but in your mercy and by your grace, you grant us your forgiveness. In the precious name of our crucified risen Saviour, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now the institution of the Lord's Supper as recorded by the Apostle Paul. For I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And we also remember on this day how disciples, some of the disciples had seen Jesus on the road, but they weren't, didn't actually recognise it was Jesus then. But when they went back 
to their room, Jesus, the risen Jesus appeared and they recognized him through the breaking of bread. May we, as we're sharing the bread and the wine this morning, recognize Jesus <coughs> with us. And may he remain with us as we seek to serve him. Lord, bless this bread and bless this wine. May they be a precious reminder of your great love for us, demonstrated in the Lord Jesus. In his name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Just as Jesus took the bread and broke it, we also take the bread and break it. Just as Jesus took the cup and shared it with his friends, we also take the cup and we give thanks. The body of Christ. Help us come forward now, please. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for the privilege that you've given to us of gathering around your table. We pray now that you will help us as we seek to witness to the risen Jesus in the days which lie ahead. In his name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. May I remind you that there are refreshments available after the service. Our final hymn is No in the Grave He Lay, number 305. Thank you. 